In this video, we're going to be looking at what might be the best ever lens for inset macro photography, the OM 2 times macro. I got this lens back in spring, about two weeks after it was launched. I did pre-order it on the day it was announced. Now, I remember this lens being talked about just after I switched to Olympus. So we're talking five, six, maybe even seven years ago, and I've been waiting for it to come out. So was it worth the wait? Until this lens came out, the only lens really suitable for inset macro photography in micro four thirds mount was this, the 60mm macro. Despite the tiny size, it's a good lens. It doesn't look like much, but it's really sharp. It does the job. And on the micro four thirds sensor, it gives you 120mm effective focal length. So it was pretty useful when you're photographing insects, but I always wanted that bit more reach. So how does this new lens compare to the older 60mm? Well, it's a bit more expensive, £1,300 compared to £450 for the 60mm and it's a lot bigger and heavier but it's still not too heavy and it has the added advantage that it will focus twice as close as a standard macro lens like the 60mm. It's also a pro lens so it's built to a higher standard and it certainly feels more solid. Although the 60mm felt quite solid it was a little bit plasticky but this feels much more robust. According to my Lightroom catalogue I've taken nearly 15,000 shots of this setup. So in this video, I'll tell you what my experiences with it have been this summer. So when you're shooting at 1.1, as close as a standard macro would focus, the subject is about 10 centimetres from the lens, which gives you a good working distance. But one of the big selling points of this lens, of course, is the fact that it's a two times macro, so we'll magnify the subject twice as much. And I thought it'd have to get twice as close. But doing some testing, it actually only needs to get within nine centimetres, just a centimetre closer, which is perfect for close-ups of insects and other skittish invertebrates. Generally with macro, you tend to stick to a manual focus, moving the camera and lens closer and further away from your subject or focusing with the focus ring. But the autofocus on this lens is actually pretty good. I've used it plenty of times, certainly on larger subjects, and it even focuses on the smaller subjects at two times magnification. So it's certainly usable. And for those that have seen my photographing dragonflies with the Bird AI autofocus, you'll know that I managed to photograph a southern migrant hawker in flight with this lens quite close up and it locked on really nicely and swiftly and accurately so the autofocus is actually quite usable with the OM-1 and this lens. Of course there is the problem when you get up to high magnifications that the narrow depth of field will mean that the slightest move of your hand or breath of wind will put the subject out of focus so you have to consider that too but it is useful at times if you want to autofocus on your subject. As you expect, it is well equipped for using manual focus. It's got a manual focus clutch. When you pull back, the focus ring reveals all the different measurements. It feels really solid as well, which is nice. There's a function button on the lens as well, which is useful for putting on to focus peaking like I've done, or depth field preview if that's what you prefer. And it's got a focus limiter switch as well. These go from 25 centimeters to infinity. 25 centimeters to 50 centimeters and that goes all the way down to 1 1 magnification and then you can switch forward into macro and that will take you down to the two times magnification but there's one switch missing from this lens which i wish they'd carried over from the 60 mil and that is this switch on the 60 mil that will instantly put the lens down to its closest focus distance at 1 1 which was really useful when you wanted to get maximum magnification but you know i can live without it i can use the manual focus clutch so it's fine but it was nice to have and I do have to mention the size and the weight. I was very spoilt for all those years with this ridiculously tiny 60mm. I mean, it's barely bigger than a film canister, isn't it? But I walked around all day with the flash diffuser and the Nightmill Macro on the OM-1, just carrying it around in my hand. And it's not that heavy. It's dead easy to carry around, especially if you're used to using a big telephoto lens. Another improvement on this lens over the 60mm is it's got built-in image stabilisation. So you've already got it in body on the OM-1, but this lens has actually got it built in as well. And it's rated to seven stops when you've got the sinking IS. So if you've got an Olympus body, if you're shooting with a Panasonic body, I think it only gives you six stops, but it's still really good. I took it out on an amphibian survey about a week after I got it. And I was balancing one foot either side of a ditch, holding the camera at arm's length to photograph these toads in the water. And it's only 45 of a second and they still come out crisp sharp. So I was really impressed with that straight off the bat. Obviously it doesn't help with an insect when it's wobbling on a leaf, but when your hands are wobbling a little bit, or you've got to hold the camera away from your eye so you can't stabilise it quite as well as you'd like, um, it comes in really handy. Now the image stabilisation also helps when you're doing video. I've paired it up with the GH6. So being the Panasonic body, it would have only had the six stops of image stabilisation, but especially when I used it on 120 frames a second and slowed it down 
the footage came out lovely. The image stabilization has stabilized all the slight movements with my hand and this footage came out really nice as you can see. In fact, it was so nice that the BBC used it on Spingwatch, so it must be pretty good. The 90mm of focal length came in really handy when I tried to photograph some orchids. Not only could I stick to the path and not risk trampling anything, it also made it a lot easier to get a clean background. Obviously the longer focal length gives you a narrower field of view, which means less distracting grasses and stuff in the background, or less chance of it at least because there's less background in the shot. And this is really handy when you're taking shots like this in a meadow setting with all the grass and stuff like that in the background. The lens also works well with focus bracketing and focus stacking in camera. I've taken a number of stacks this year. I've got some shots using bean bags and the tripod to get these orchids and this broom rape flower. But I've also done some handheld shots. So I've got these hornet robber flies, I managed to stack them. And I'm resting on the ground with my elbows, but it's still handheld. The image stabilization probably helped a lot here when getting this shot. And you can do some silly things like this, like making a 3D model in Helicon Focus. Now, one concern I did have with the longer focal length was would this lens work with one of these big flash diffusers? Now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll probably know the answer to this is yes, it worked really well. And here's a few shots for those who haven't seen them already that I've got in the last few months. The 90mm macro has been really good for subjects that I previously would have used my 300mm lens for. So things like dragonflies and butterflies that I wouldn't be able to get close enough to with my 60mm macro, I was managing to get with the 90mm. So things like this brimstone butterfly, usually quite a flighty species, I could stay just far enough away to get nice shots and when one actually cooperated I could get some nice close-ups too. So this extra focal length and extra working distance that comes with it means you're less likely to flush or scare your subject. But it also means it's a lot easier to avoid getting your shadow on them, which can either ruin the shot or can, again, flush or scare them away. For example, I got this bee fly. I suspect I wouldn't have been able to get with the 60 mil because I had that extra working distance. And of course, the extra working distance and ability to keep your shadow off the subject helps with larger subjects, like this marsh frog I got sitting in a pond. And of course, there's a two times magnification that has come in really useful with the insects and invertebrates that are less than a centimetre long. So I've got pictures of this lovely little jewel beetle, plant bug in my garden, and of course the distinguished jumping spiders as well. I've not really had much chance to do any of my pond creature photography, which is where I put pond creatures in little aquariums to photograph them. But I did get this nice shot of a tadpole earlier in the year. And I filmed these water boatmen as well using the GH6. But when I found some tiny ostracods on a pond dip, I did test out another feature which I haven't really tested that much with this lens. It's compatibility with the teleconverters. You could MacGyver something with some extension tubes and the teleconverters on the 60mm, but this all works as it was designed to. There's space at the back of the lens for the teleconverter to fit. And I got some really nice shots of these ostracods. These are about two to three millimetres long, and this is a close-up of the face of one. The depth of field is quite narrow, but it came out really well, especially when you consider it's shooting through glass and water to get this shot. So overall, as you can probably tell, I've been quite impressed. If you shoot micro four thirds and you want a lens for inset macro photography and you can afford this lens, it's a no-brainer. But is it the best ever lens for inset macro photography? Well, the objective and diplomatic part of me would say it depends. There are other 180mm macros out there. There are other two times, even up to five times macros out there. But there isn't a 180mm equivalent macro with the two times magnification out there. And I think that gives it the edge. And if you compare it to some of those extreme magnification lenses, they're very fiddly to use and manual focus only. Some of them are manual aperture as well. And the other 180mm macros are a lot heavier. So this lens is less than 500 grams. Whereas the Canon 180mm is over a kilo and the Sigma is 1.5 kilos, so two or three times the weight. I just think the smaller size, the image stabilisation and all the other things I've mentioned today just tip it over the edge for me. I think it is the best macro lens you can get at the moment. To such extent that when someone contacted me the other day asking me about this lens combined with the OM1 and I had no hesitation in saying yes, it's worth switching to Olympus 
to use this setup. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say, yes, it is the best lens you can buy. But of course, if you shoot Canon or Nikon, I'm not saying you should jump ship straight away. But if you shoot Olympus or Micro Four Thirds, I think this is the lens to get for inset macro photography. I hope you found that useful. I'm going to be talking more about some other Olympus lenses in future videos. And of course, I've got all my normal content on British wildlife, wildlife filmmaking and nature photography. So do please subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. And if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like. Thanks for watching.